Okay, it's 5.30, we'll call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. This is the Marion City Council meeting, Thursday, April 20th. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Mr. Miskman? Here. Mr. Jensen? Here. Mr. Harper? Here. Mayor Abu Asli? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Ms. Menser? Here. Mr. Sterned? Here. Thank you. This time we have a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, uh, this evening, of course, on the agenda, we have a proclamation for Arbor Day. And uh, Mr. Simpich, are you going to accept the proclamation? Please come forward and I'll come down front. Okay. We have our city arborist here to accept the proclamation. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for planting trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than 1 million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas Marion is well known for its tree-lined streets and parks and has been recognized as a tree city USA community. And whereas Arbor Day activities have been carried out all over the United States since 1872 for promoting efforts to plant and maintain trees for their many benefits. Now, therefore, I, Nicholas Abu Asli, mayor of the city of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim Friday, April 28, 2023, as Arbor Day in the city of Marion and urge all residents to support efforts to care for our trees and woodlands and support tree planting efforts and encourage residents to plant trees for present and future generations. All right, thank you. I do want to recognize the efforts of our urban forestry department, our parks department, for all their efforts on caring for our trees and our tree canopy and all the replanting efforts and all the efforts that are going there that, that they are making to reestablish our important tree canopy. Uh, they do a great job for our city. So thank you. Okay. Next is a public forum, which is a time set aside on the agenda for uh, members of the public to address the city council on any topic that is listed on the agenda, but it's not part of a public hearing. Uh, there will be another public comment section toward the end of the meeting for other comments. But at this time, if there's anyone here to address the city council on any topic that is listed on the agenda, but not associated with the public hearing, please come forward. Please come forward to the microphone. Please state your name and address. And uh, I guess tell us which topic you're here to, to, to discuss. Which Good item. evening. Hi. I'm Brandon Alda. I live at 4560 Widgeon Court. Okay. 
I'd like to address the council on the traffic cameras. Yes. I would like to uh, state that I feel that they are unconstitutional and illegal. And as a citizen, when we receive a ticket, we should have a right to face our accuser in court. And a car and license plate cannot face a camera in a courtroom. It's, to me, just another tax. It's a way for the government to harass and extort money from the citizens. An example I have of that, my daughter in Davenport was working at Target after college. And by the time she received one of these tickets, she received six because it took them three weeks to send them out and she couldn't afford food at the time. It's not a deterrent unless an officer pulls you over and gives you a citation, then you'll modify your behavior. So that was my comment on that. And I would also like to ask the council, how are they gonna pay the legal fees for these cameras? Is that gonna come out of the taxpayer's pocket to address the legal challenges for these cameras? And the other concern I have is that these cameras will be providing money to a private party camera company rather than going into the government coffers for these violations. I think that an actual officer should have to pull you over and give you a citation, not a camera. And I believe that uh, liberty is lost, a big brother socialism creeps in, and it's all done under the guise of public safety. Taxation is theft. Thank you for letting me speak. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing that no one is coming forward, we will move on with the consent agenda. <clears throat> Mayor, I move to approve the consent agenda as follows. Items A1 through G1, resolutions 31324 through 31344. Second. So moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. Items A1 through G1, resolutions 31324 through 31344, discussion. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The motion is approved. For the next section, I'll turn over the meeting to the mayor pro tem. Thank you, Your, Your Honor. Uh, we have one item under the consent agenda with the mayor's abstention. May I have the motion, please? Mayor pro tem, I move to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abwasli's abstention as follows. Item E1, resolution 31345. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda with the mayor's abstention. This is items E1, resolution 31345. Any questions? Very good. All those in favor of the consent agenda as stated, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution or motion carries. Back to the mayor. Thank you. At this time, we have a public hearing on a proposal to enter into a general purpose loan agreement. The public hearing is now open and we'll have a Presentation. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick note that these do just simply set the maximum of the general obligation bond loan agreements. There is further council action in order to proceed. Um, this particular first one is for general purpose. The purpose of undertaking the development of new municipal parks, including land acquisition, public improvements, and equipment acquisition and installation, and this is one that in lieu of calling an election, we published notice and no one has filed for a petition. Um, up on the screen, you can see the maximum is 500,000. The total cost of the two projects is 380,000. We generally include um, a cushion in there for issuance costs and then rounding. Okay. At this time, the public hearing is open. If there was anyone is here to address the council on this measure, Please come forward, either in favor or in opposition. Please come forward. 
Hmm. Okay. Have we received any comments outside this meeting? No. None. Okay. Please note that for the record. We'll close the public hearing. Um, we have another public hearing uh, on a proposal to enter into a refunding loan agreement. We'll open the public hearing and have a presentation. Similarly, this is um, for refunding of the series 2015A, 2015B, Genesis Equities Loan and Disaster Loan. Again, it says the maximum, the total we were expecting was 15.35 million when you add up the issuances. However, at this time, we have found that series 2015B in the Genesis Equities Loan will not be feasible. So still on the plate is 2015A and Disaster Loan, depending on how rates Okay, this time the public hearing is open for comment. If anyone's here to address the council on this measure, either in favor or in opposition, please come forward. Okay, have we received any comments outside the meeting? No, I have not. Okay, please note that in the record. We'll close the public hearing and move on to the next public hearing on so, a proposal to enter into an essential purpose loan agreement. This final one is the maximum of 7.1 million for the purpose of paying the costs for constructing street, water system, sanitary sewer system, stormwater drainage and sidewalk improvements, acquiring and installing street lighting, signage and signalization improvements, and renovation and improvement of existing municipal parks, including Lau Park and City Square Park, Central Plaza. And you can see the full list on the screen of our intentions. Okay. If anyone is here to address council on this measure, please come forward at this time, either in favor or in opposition. Have we received comments outside the meeting? Nope. I not. Okay. Please note that in the record. We'll close the public hearing and um, just one second. Okay. Go ahead. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31346, taking additional action on proposals to enter into general obligation loan agreements, combining loan agreements and authorizing the use of preliminary official statement in connection therewith. Second. Moved and seconded to enter, uh, to approve resolution number one, three, one, three, four, six, taking additional action on the proposals to enter into a general obligation loan agreements, combining loan agreements and authorizing the use of a preliminary official statement. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is approved. It's my first time here. Let's see if I can get this. <laughs> Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31347, adopting a revenue purpose statement regarding use of revenues from proposed gas and electric franchise fees pursuant to Iowa Code section 364.24F. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Miskimen, seconded by Council Member Jensen to approve resolution number 31347, adopting a revenue purpose statement regarding use of revenues from proposed gas and electric franchise fees pursuant to Iowa Code Section 364.24F. Discussion. Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. If I may, I did want to point out a couple of things regarding the franchise fee. Go ahead. In the Council memo, I did let for the ordinances because the ordinances are also on the consent agenda. I wanted to point out the fact that staff is recommending that we do waive the final reading due to the timing for implementation for the Alliant Energy. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out is this particular franchise fee did not make the public hearing notice. So it's not included in the budget, but it can be amended in later. I wanted to point that out as well. And the reason why staff is recommending that we waive the third reading is because Alliant Energy 
the time frame is the end of August, I believe, when they would be able to implement. And Alliant Energy makes up 35, 70, between 64 and 74 percent of the total electric gas franchise. And that first quarter of the fiscal year, July, August, September, makes up 35 percent of the total we receive from Alliant. I just wanted to make council aware of that. Okay. Ryan pointed out one other thing. It also adds consistency with the other ones because the timing for Alliant to implement isn't in alignment with the short, shorter time frames for Mid America and Lynn REC. Does that make sense? There's a quicker turnaround for the other utilities, so it's a fairness thing. By waiving the second, the waiving the other readings for the alliance, it, it creates a fairness across the entire community instead of just having those that are L uh, Lynn County REC and Mid American. They would they would get the franchise fee first, so this brings in that alignment. And I did include two versions of an implementation schedule for council to review. So. Just wanted to call that out so council can review it prior to the first reading. Okay, so what are you ask, asking for this evening? This evening, we're simply just adopting the revenue purpose statement. The okay. statement is left unchanged. I just wanted, related to that topic, to make sure we pointed it out. Okay, thank Sorry, you. Okay. Oh, so. Okay, so we have the motion and a second. Go ahead, discussion. Yeah, and Leanne, I just want to just uh, maybe just for uh, clarity, there are two implementation schedules in our packet, and it is the second one then if we waive the third reading that you've just discussed. Correct. Okay. Okay, other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 31347, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. The next item is a public hearing on the fiscal year 2024 through 2028 capital improvement program. Uh, the public hearing is now open. Who has the presentation on this? I do, and I'm going to keep it short and sweet because this is an area we have communicated numerous times. Um, so the full CIP capital improvement program includes 137.7 million. Total expenditures for fiscal year 24 included in the budget includes 66.35 million. Um, I included there the, the projects with the largest expenditures for fiscal year 24. The full, pro the full list of projects were included in the council packet for council's consumption. Okay. At this time, the public hearing is open for comments from members of the public. So we're here to address council on this item. If anyone's here to address council, please come forward. Okay. Did you receive any comments outside the meeting? The city clerk did, but I did not. Okay. Uh, Frank Sherman at 4170 Canton Court uh, wrote in prior to the meeting. He complimented the team that worked on the capital improvement program and stated everything was easy to read and understand. Okay. Thank you. And that was the only comment outside the meeting. Okay, seeing no one's coming forward, we will close the public hearing. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31348, approving the fiscal year 2024 to 2028 capital improvement program. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31348, approving fiscal year 2024 through 2028 capital improvement program discussion. Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 31348, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Motion is approved. Next item is a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 23 24 budget. 
We'll open the public hearing. Last one for me tonight. Okay. <laughs> you can go ahead and read the numbers on the screen. I'm gonna read really quickly our budget highlights. Public safety remains the top strategic plan priority in fiscal year 24 and accounts for nearly 2.2 million of the $3.2 million increase in costs in the general fund. The budget includes the addition of six new firefighters, the only positions added. The budget also includes wage increases to support the recruitment and retention of police officers, an E911 radio tower contracted payment, and the final installation for the public safety records management software. Given the competitiveness of the labor market and the need to attract and retain a strong team driven to deliver on the city's reach hire mission, the city council provided for a 4% wage increase for non-bargaining staff. The application of the funds will be dependent on the results of the compensation study currently underway. The budget also includes increases for bargaining staff as outlined in respective contracts. Inflation continues to impact expenses particularly in the areas of general insurance and health insurance. And then also just noting for the record, an owner of a single family home valued at 100,000 this year will pay $53 in additional taxes for, for just the city's portion compared to last year. On multi-residential properties at that same value of $100,000, they will actually see a decrease of $83 and commercial property valued at $1 million will see a $48 decrease. Okay. Is there anyone here to address council on this measure? Please come forward, either in favor or in opposition. Have you received any comments outside the meeting? I have not. I have not. Thank you. Please note that for the record. We'll close the public hearing. Mr. Hudson? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move to approve resolution number 31349, approving the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31349, approving fiscal year 23-24 budget. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 31349, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion's approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31350, approving the Marion Strategic Plan for fiscal year 23 through 25. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31350, approving the Marion Strategic Plan for fiscal years 2023 through 2025. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 31350, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Motion's approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31351, authorizing the sale of city property and directing staff to prepare necessary documents. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31351, authorizing the sale of city property and directing staff to prepare necessary documents. Uh, discussion, I believe the chief has some comments to make. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> This concerns the sale of a police canine. Uh, we currently have three canines on the department, uh, uh, two narcotics dogs, uh, one bomb dog, and they're all cross-trained for patrol. Um, they are considered highly trained city assets uh, and are considered to be contributing members of the Marion Police Department. Uh, one of the handlers has submitted his resignation and requested to take ownership of his canine partner. <clears throat> the canine in question Officer Kane was purchased by the city of Marion for $16,000. He joined the department in 2018. Uh, the purchase price for uh, Officer Kane does not include other city of Marion costs incurred, such as additional training equipment or other operational costs. Typical, typical tenure of a canine officer is approximately 10 to 11 years. Uh, Kane still has about five or six years remaining. Uh, when working dogs are of retirement age, city policy allows us to sell the dog to the handler for a dollar, and we've done that in the past. 
there's several unique circumstances with this uh, request. Uh, the canine handler is choosing to leave the department uh, before the canine is of retirement age and the canine handler has requested to uh, purchase the dog. The city acknowledges and respects the connection between the officer and the canine uh, but is re and is recommending a purchase price of $9,000. That's based off the initial cost and the years of service we believe the dog has left. Um, less than a year ago, uh, Kane was involved in a serious accident, um, a work injury to his leg. Uh, the, a decision was made at that time by the, the officer, the handler, uh, myself, and the canine commander uh, that we would spend the funds to try to keep the dog working. Um, we had surgeries performed up at the University of Iowa and it resulted in considerable vet expenses, including a second surgery in November, uh, this past November. Um, Kane has been with the department approximately five years, and despite his injuries, it's anticipated he's got another five or six years left in him. Uh, he may be a single purpose dog uh, due to the injury to his leg, uh, but he can still do the narcotics work uh, with his nose. Uh, we've got a prognosis from the veterinarian after the last surgery that he thought he could return to that duty, and that's kind of what we're going by. Uh, the purchase price again was established due to the fact he's not been retired and is still able, still able to perform his duties. Uh, Kane's handler has requested the sale price be reconsidered from 9,000 to $1. Uh, again, we respect and appreciate the bond between those two, uh, the dog and the handler, um, but we're also responsible for being good stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. And we've got a significant investment in this dog I think $9,000 is a fair price, and that's what we brought forward. Okay. So discussion? Go ahead. So the dog is cleared to be, I'm seeing different um, comments and things posted in, out in public. So I, I want to clarify, the dog is cleared to work. It has, or it is working or has been back on duty? Yeah, he came back. Uh, after the first of the year from the last surgery, he had a list of um, physical therapies, if you will, that the surgeon and the folks up at Iowa State said he needed to do. Uh, and we've been going through those. He's been coming to work and training with the handler. Uh, and again, the last prognosis was the dog would, would be able to continue working. He's not gonna be as fast as he was before. The leg is basically a, um, um, a peg leg, if you will, uh, where they had to fuse the bones together in the last surgery. Uh, but he can still work. You know, our canine commander has been out, watched him train. He's confident that he can continue working. Other discussion? Go ahead. Yeah, so Chief, I, I think this discussion thus far and what you've said, we've got a, um, a trained, serviceable city asset that we're entertaining the sale for that still retains a fundamental value relative to its trained core competencies. Is that a, a safe way to? Um... Yeah, the, the patrol functions, he's not gonna be able to right. do as much uh, just because he didn't have the speed that he used to have, uh, but we could reassign him to another officer um, and continue him working as a narcotics dog. We haven't done that here since I've been here. Uh, every dog before this has met retirement age and left, uh, but I can tell you, I was a canine handler in Memphis uh, back in my younger days, and the dog I got had been on the department for six years. The handler left, and the dog had about four years left. And so I took that dog and worked and worked her until she retired, hmm. and then I took her home. And then she lived, you know, on the couch eating Cheetos with the kids. So, so I just sort of a follow on to that, and taking the the uh, the situation with our uh, patrol officer who's um, leaving the department under a different scenario. If a um, another um, agent, a law enforcement agency had an interest in this dog, we would still be, still be making the same value based uh, assessment relative to its value, and yes. and that transaction would occur under the under those auspices. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor, I just. Um, as the chief noted in, in, in the packet, um, the uh, officer has, has requested that council consider uh, the purchase price of a dollar. Um, the 
the officer and I have exchanged emails uh, over the last couple of days. I've shared those emails with the council. So uh, I believe in the email, there's there's a couple of justifications uh, that the officer puts forward for that consideration. So. Okay, other discussion, go ahead. No, I think the only, I mean, this is, it obviously is a tough piece because we all love our dogs and people and the relationship. And I greatly appreciate the fact that Handler loves the dog like family and that's exactly what we'd hope for. So I think it's a it's a tough position that everybody has now been put in by the departure of the officer before the retirement of the dog. Did in the I keep looking at Chief, but I guess I could ask Ryan too. Um, is there there is there um, in training or in stepping forward as an officer to be a handler? Is there a conversation expectation on that? you are committing to be a part of this department with this canine officer as your partner for the life of the canine? Is that a piece of- I, I think I think each one of the handlers understands it's a long-term commitment, you know, 10, 10 years plus um, with the dog. And again, the officer's choosing to leave of his own accord. Um, but I, I think from um, um, looking at the financial side of it, again, that's uh, the dog still has a value to the city. And, and I, I don't think that that's an unfair price for the dog at 9,000. If I can if I can add on, um, just as, I mean, we're always looking for continuous improvement and how we can um, bring clarity to different issues. So um, you know, one of the things that is customary and, and we do here uh, in Marion for uh, police officers. So we, when we hire a police officer and we invest in them and send them to uh, the academy, we have an agreement that they sign. So if they leave be before a certain period of time, they reimburse the, the 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 city for the cost for that training because we're we're training up somebody and then they're leaving to a different department. So the uh, the department's getting the benefit of that training. Um, as we are um, as as this issue um, came up and the request from the officer um, that that's uh, assigned to uh, Officer Kane. Um, that was one thing that I asked Chief if we do have those agreements in place. And I think one of the things that we're going to be looking at doing um, in this particular issue is, is is kind of explore what can we what can we do because we do have other uh, two other uh, handlers and you know there is that bond with with the their their uh, their partner. Um, so we just want to make sure that we can help bring clarity to that and just kind of lay out the expectations and understand the commitment. Um, so. It, you know, it is, this is, um, you know, I'm a pet owner um, and uh, I have two dogs of my own. And so certainly understand that that connection and, and how they do become part of the family. Um, and so, you know, this is, this is a, 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 diff, a difficult situation, but, you know, at the same time, as Chief noted, you know, we do have the responsibility to the taxpayers and, and the investment in uh, Officer Kane. So, um, Steve? So just to be clear on, on what we're voting on, so there's been two numbers that have been talked about here. So this resolution is to approve selling a city asset, which is Kane for $9,000. Is that correct? The, no, the, the resolution provides the authorization. We will need that direction from the city council for the record. Um, the resolution um, Officer Kane is an asset of the city, so we do need the the, the council to approve the the sale, um, and in doing so, le establishing what that price is. So staff's recommending nine thousand. The handlers re requested uh, one dollar. Um, the so amount is not part of the resolution. So do we need an amendment to put that in here, or how are we? How is that being decided? We only need direction from council. Okay. There will be an a, there's a an agreement when we transfer ownership, and so the value will be put into that document. Okay. Well, I'm of the opinion that it's fine to sell sell the dog, but at the at the value that is established, uh, which is nine thousand dollars, that that, that uh, so that would be I would be in favor approving the sale at the $9,000 level, um, which is what the value of, of him as an asset to the city and the value of the investment that that the city has put in 
put into this um, the officer came um, that, that remains um, unrealized un, un, uh, by the city. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so Officer Kane has been rehabilitated to retain largely its core um, functionality uh, as an officer. Um, and so, you know, under under a normal scenario where everything was staying uh, within the confines, the the employment of the officer as well as Officer Kane, uh, he would still the 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 canine would would continue to do work um, that is valuable to the city. Um, under any scenario of sale to our departing officer. That dog retains a material value for the work that for which it's been trained. In that sale to the officer, we're, we're not denoting the dog as retired. And I'm going to assume, and this is really a question, we're not putting any restriction on that ongoing ownership with that dog. Correct? I mean, um, the officer could, the departing officer uh, 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 personal ownership, he, that dog could be then uh, transferred to another uh, agency because it still maintains and, and, and retains uh, some valuable uh, capabilities. So we're, it, 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 you know, it's, it's a little bit, I'm thinking about the last time uh, I adopted uh, a dog and there were some stipulations put on that by the um, the agency from which we adopted the dog. And so I'm, I guess what I'm really trying to say here is the dog retains a material value uh, for its capability. And the minute it leaves um, under the employ of Marion, it still retains that value and is materially marketable, not that that's what would happen. So I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to separate this out from the emotion of the relationship with the dog and the dog with its handler and, and to, to try to look at it as we what we're talking about, and this bothers me because I've got a critter at home who I dearly love, um, but we really are talking about a marketable asset that retains value in a marketplace. And so unless we're willing to, you know, to, um, unless we are w really willing to say we need to retire the dog and then the $1 becomes a viable discussion, I, I don't know, you know, but if we can't get there, I don't know what other alternatives we have for what's, what's on the table. Anyone else? Go ahead, Trent. Uh, Gage, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to add just, from reading, you know, news articles and and um, talk in the community and, and hearing what's going on, um, I just want to recognize the fact that, um, you know, this is also an example of you know the community coming together. As some in this room are probably aware of the the fundraiser going around, supporting raising the funds for this this price that had been established. And I think, like I said, it's a example of the community coming together, and you know. But at the end of the day, we cannot really break previous established. Um, you know, the dog is not retired. It's five years old. Um, at the end of the day, also, I want to add that, you know, I don't think anybody is, is saying that the officer cannot uh, have the dog. We're just um, selling it for the value that's left. And with the fundraiser, I would add that um the community is saying um, by supporting the fundraiser that it's willing to to pay that price for this dog and the public has already paid the price for the dog as it's a taxpayer funded asset so i just wanted to kind of recognize that point too um, and what i'm thinking about as as we're deciding things here i do agree on the precedent uh, comment you know thing like this anyone else Okay. 
discussion? So the motion the motion is is just to simply approve this approve the sale, but then you want direction on on the on the price. I believe in in terms of um, the direction that we would need, it sounds like everybody who's weighed in so far has um, given the direction that they believe 9,000 is correct. I think if there's anybody on council who believes that $1 is the correct amount, um, if they would speak up, that would be helpful. But otherwise, we just need a vote on the authorization. I believe your discussion has given us good direction. Okay. So if anyone has any opinion that hasn't been voiced, please do so. Table vote. All those in favor of approving resolution number 31351, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance number 23-04, amending the code, Marion Code of Ordinances by adding language regarding automatic traffic enforcement, ATE. This will be the final consideration. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 23-04, amending the Marion Code of Ordinances by adding language regarding automated traffic enforcement. Final consideration, discussion. Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. So um, I had the opportunity to um, uh, have a respond and to a uh, citizen communique and um, I'll have to say there's there's a complexity with this issue um, that I think that could be um, teased out, um, you know, in an endless loop. But from, as you might guess, the research that I did um, illuminated that there's a span of very supportive, uh, highly correlated research that says ATE is effective um, it is effective for uh, deterrence um, and the protection of, uh, you know, life safety. And then there are some uh, research bases that um, have less of a correlation. But I think it is a conservative measure for us to enact this from the standpoint of um, we have a a, an emerging, or I should say we have an increasing problem for what's happening in the area in terms of red light violations as well as speeding. So um, based on what I understand uh, with the conditions surrounding this and the research that's been done, I'm in favor of this. Other discussion? Sarah? Question. Um, to the comments that were made earlier, there was a question about filing a number of tickets before you know you even got one. Um, but what is the turn, if some, what is, what are we projecting a turnaround time would be for ticket um, mailing out to folks or if somebody got one? I would say within 30 days. I haven't gotten into specifics with any vendors yet, but uh, 30 days. Before you, like, oh. Yeah, because we, we set the amount of time that they have uh, to appeal that. Uh, after they receive it was 30 days uh, beyond that to appeal it. Uh, so, again, if you, if you get a number of tickets before they actually show up in the mail, I don't know that that's, you know. Right. Um, yeah. Do I like them? No. Did I pose when they first came up? Yes. Did I like them when they went up on 380 in our neighbor with our neighbors? No. Was I at an organization where I heard a lot of comments about I'll never come back to your town because you put these in? Yes. Do I guess they probably did? Yes. So um, I like the fact that we are starting on a couple major major corners as far as that we know we have problems at. We continue to see the data as a problem with it. So that's why I'm voting for this. Again, it's no, I don't know who likes th likes them. I mean, but again, we have to do something to try to deal with the dangerous intersections we're dealing with and kind of um, see if we can correct some of the situations we have right now. I just wanna, oh, go ahead. 
sorry, just really quick. I want to be timely with uh, Councilman Councilmember Mentor's a question about the um, ticket processing. All of that is before council tonight is the authorization by code to establish it and the policy. If if this is adopted, the next step that we have to go through as staff is go through that selection process. So there is we don't have a vendor uh, in place. So that is another action that the council will have to take and something that we as staff um, can can take that the council member mentor your question about processing that's something that we can make sure that we're including and in talking to the first the possible vendors uh, as we go through that selection process so I just want to be uh, clear the action before council tonight is authorizing the code for it to happen we would still have to go through that selection process as far as the red light cameras go um, I just want to clarify for the record that there's it's the two locations. It's limited to two locations. Any additional locations would have to come back to council. Correct. And we would bring you the data to to show you why we think okay. that's necessary. But council would have to approve any additional ones other than um, 13 and 151 Highway 100 and East Post, and then we had the mobile camera in there as well that right. would be deployed based on citizen complaints or community members' complaints. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Go ahead, Gates first, and then Steve. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. I just, you know, I'll be kind of vocalizing some of my notes here just to get feedback from from other council members. Um, yeah. Overall, I'm fundamentally just a little bit hesitant on this still, um, and just for the same facts that other folks in the community have kind of pointed out. One thing, though, I will say, is that another. I'll give a pro to start with AT. Um, you know, it's been noted that traffic cameras can address uh, inequities present in traditional traffic enforcement, which I'm sure has been pointed out um, in the past um, when it comes to race, nationality, gender. Um, and however, I think, you know, if this is um, ultimately passed, I just want to reiterate the, the utmost importance that, you know, the community engagement and in careful consideration is taken into any actual placements of the cameras. Um, and, I, and I would personally want the community to feel involved and communicated to as a primary goal here um, should be should be public safety. Um, I mean, personally, I would also like to see like when we talk about East Post and Highway 100, um, some things to be considered as well as, you know, flashing lights, especially in the west bound lanes as you come over the hill and that lights um, kind of right there. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've seen the videos and, and have seen semis myself um, <laughs> kind of either hit that yellow fast or, or barely make it past as it turns red. But um, I think that, and then a question I guess I have is um, another factor I think should be in place of that is the um, timing of like signals, how long like our yellow lights last. And I know that there's risk to changing that too. Is that something that's been looked into in the past with like East Post 100 and the other intersection, like letting yellows be longer or is that a pro con there? Yeah, so for East Post 100, um, I don't know if you're aware, but we do have a, a grant to do that intersection. So that will be completely new signals. They'll be completely retimed. There'll be turn lanes added, and that timing will be looked at at that time. Um, for 151 and uh, 13, that has been retimed in the past, and we've made some modifications to that. Again, that's something that every couple of years we're supposed to look at. Okay. Um and yeah, I've been doing a ton of reading on this, um, different <laughs> departments of transportation documents. And just a couple things I do want to note is that, you know, when Cedar Rapids established these cameras um, back in the early 2010s, um, by 2016, their speeding citations had actually almost doubled, if not doubled. Um, so I know it's like a deterrent um, in the first place, but for a good chunk of years, that didn't prove to be the case in Cedar Rapids. Um, Another thing just to be aware of is obviously I understand that overall uh, fatality crash rates do go down, um, especially when it comes to uh, right angle crashes, which proved to be the most dangerous um, for those struck. 
But one thing to be aware of as I've been doing research is that um, rear end crashes do sometimes increase in communities due to the deterrence and people uh, slamming the brakes on the, on the red. So just some of those things I talked about like flashing lights and adding those things I think would make that even safer. Um, because ideally, obviously, the goal would be that nobody gets a ticket and everybody follows the rules. Um, so ultimately, if pass, I'm just kind of throwing these other thoughts out there as things to consider as consequences of this, too, that maybe we didn't think about. Yeah, just a couple of observations. Uh, the, the ATE has been a topic of discussion for at least the past two or three months. Uh, it's had a number of articles in the Gazette. The thing that surprises me at this point is probably the small number of comments that as a city we have received. We've seen some emails, we've received a few emails. We've had a few people uh, at our city council meetings, each direction, some in favor, some against, but probably uh, people I've talked to personally or people I've talked to at the library that have come up to me, uh, the majority of them have been in favor of this. So uh, again, just looking at that aspect that this has not been a really volatile item in the city is kind of an indication to me that most of them are either probably used to it or are ready for it so i will be voting in favor um, i do agree that i i think um, it's a bit surprising we haven't heard more from people but but um i think that um We've heard supportive comments because of the locations. I think people realize those two those locations are problematic. Um, I don't know what would happen if we if it was expanded. Um, you know, I like Sarah, you know, have been uh, very apprehensive about it from the beginning. Um, I think if it is approved, we really need to share the data because the data is compelling. I mean, it is, there's, there are issues and we really need to share the data broadly in the community. I think there is support in the community, again, for the locations that have been selected. Um, I have a little bit of comfort in the fact that we're gonna revisit this in six months. Is it every six months or just one, one time? Every six months. Every six months, we're gonna revisit it that no new locations for red light cameras are gonna be approved without council approval. Those give me a little bit of um, comfort. Um, so, anyone else? We ready to vote? Okay, all those in favor of the final consideration of ordinance number 23-04, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. No. Okay, we have one no. The ayes have it, and the motion is approved. Sorry. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31352, approving the automated traffic enforcement camera policy. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31352. Approving the automated traffic enforcement camera policy. Discussion? Yes, Mayor. Go ahead. Yeah, Chief. So, uh, do you have uh, any kind of a timeline that you're going to uh, be moving uh, for relative to vendor selection, uh, capabilities, uh, confirmation, all that kind of stuff? I've got an RFP started. Um, I think full Im implementation once we you would select a, a vendor, I'm guessing will be four to six months from the time they would put the cameras in uh, and then set up kind of the back, I think it's referred to as the back room piece about processing and how we do all that, but four to six months would okay. be good. So that, so th that gives us some additional time to think about um, how our policy and how the ordinance is, is enacted, if there's any other gaps that we identify uh, it's not like everything's turning on in two weeks. Correct. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Any further comments on 31352? All those in favor of approving resolution number 31352, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. No. Okay, so we have one no. The ayes have it and the motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance number 23-05 amending chapter 313-10.12 of the Marion Code of Ordinances relating to parking on private property and towing, and this is the final consideration. Second. So moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 23-05 amending chapter 313-10.12 of the Marion Code of Ordinances relating to parking on private property and towing. Discussion? All those in favor of ordinance number 23-05, the final consideration, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Yes, Your Honor. I move to approve resolution number 31353, approving contract and bond to Quorum Construction, LLC, regarding the 2023 Twixtown Road and Marion Boulevard intersection improvements project and authorizing payment in the amount of $163,002.98. Second. So moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31353, approving contract and bond to Quorum Construction for the 2023 Twixtown Road and Marion Boulevard intersection improvements project and authorizing payment in the amount of $163,002.98. Discussion? All those in favor of resolution 31353, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Next is a public hearing for the 2023 10th Avenue resurfacing project. The public hearing is open. Do we have a presentation, Mike? Yes, Your Honor. So uh, this project is business 151 or 10th Avenue from 35th Street to 13. And this is um, both putting drain tile in and also a mill and overlay. It'll be done in phases. Um, so with this project, we did receive one bid that came in at 98.87% of the engineer's estimate for $1,404,080.40. Uh, the bids were received on April 11th. It has a late start date of July 31st, 55 working days and $1,000 per day per calendar day of liquidated damages. And we are recommending that we proceed with this project. Thank you, Mike. Anyone here to just to uh, address the council, either in favor or, or in opposition of this measure, please come forward. Okay, have we received comments outside the meeting? We have not. Okay, seeing though no one's coming forward, we'll close the public hearing and I'll, I will turn over the meeting to the mayor pro tem for the resolution for the motion. Thank you, Your Honor. So we are on item E3. May I have a motion, please? Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve the project calendar regarded, regarding the 2023 10th Avenue resurfacing project as follows. Resolutions 31354 through 31355. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the project calendar regarding the 2023 10th Avenue resurfacing project uh, as follows, resolutions 31354 through 31355. Discussion. Yes, well, sorry, just a quick question, Mike. I missed it when you were just talking. Is it the eastbound or westbound that's skimmed in this year? So it's the southerly lane, so it's eastbound. Eastbound, thank you. Okay, good. Anything? Same question. Okay. Eastbound. Anything else? All right. All those in favor of approving the project calendar regarding the 2023 10th Avenue resurfacing project as follows, resolutions 31354 through 31355. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is a public hearing on the 2023 pavement patching project. Public hearing is open. We have a presentation. Yes, sir. So this is two locations. The first one is 29th Avenue from Indian Creek Road to 35th Street, where our mini roundabout is. And the second location is 8th Avenue 
from 13th Street to just east of the intersection of 22nd Street. So this is similar to what we've done in the past years where this is doing a selective patchwork and then diamond grinding the entire thing so you have a nice smooth road. When we're completed, we received several bids. You should have a complete bid package in your packet. Uh, the low bid came in from central states at $1,247,370, which was about 88% of the engineer's estimate. Um, the bids were received on April 11th, has a late start date of August 14th with 55 working days and liquidated damages in the amount of $1,000 per calendar day. And we are recommending proceeding with central states. Okay. If anyone here is, uh, is here to address council, either in favor or in opposition to this measure, please come forward. Mike, have we received any comments outside the meeting? We have not. Okay, please note that for the record. Seeing that no one's coming forward, we'll close the public hearing. I'll turn over the meeting to the mayor pro tem for the vote. Thank you, your honor. So we're on item E5. Uh, I'll entertain a motion, please. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve project calendar regarding the 2023 pavement patching project as follows. Resolutions 31356 through 31357. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the project calendar regarding the 2023 pavement patching project as follows. Resolutions 31356 and 31357. Any discussion? Very good. All those in favor of the of approving the motion, the project calendar as stated, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Back to the mayor. Okay. Next is a public hearing on a request to rezone property from BC Community Business to BR Regional Business for property located at 3201 and 3301 Armar Drive. The public hearing is now open and we have a presentation. Dave, go ahead. This will be a brief one. Um, property in question is highlighted there in the, uh, the blue outline. Uh, this is just off Armar Drive. It's uh, the last 20 years or so has been uh, mostly a U.S. cellular call center. Um, this is just south of uh, Marion Boulevard, 7th Avenue in that location. Uh, the applicants are seeking to rezone the property to business regional from business community or community business, sorry. Uh, the it's really been initiated to allow for the St. Luke's emergency room facility. Um, however, when we're rezoning properties, we don't look at just one use, we look at the future use from here going forward if it's approved. Uh, the business regional is supported by the um, comprehensive plan. It does designate the area as commercial, quarter commercial, which supports the zoning change. Uh, the biggest differences between BC and BR uh, zoning is really um, um, about 13 or so uses. Um, it, business C, business community serving a community area. The regional is starting to serve a larger area uh, beyond Marion's borders. Obviously, emergency room put that bill. Um, but it does allow uses such as that aren't allowed in the BC as a convenience store, ga a gas station, car wash, um, heavy uh, drive throughs heavy vehicle-oriented businesses. Uh, most of those businesses aren't going to be this far off 7th Avenue, Marion Boulevard, uh, but they would be allowed, um, most likely along Armar Drive if they did come to the property. Um, to address that, we saw the design standards and design review, so if a new project did come in uh, that's not allowed today, that would be allowed at the future zoning, they go through the site plan review process to ensure that it's not impacting the adjacent property owners. Uh, talking about adjacent property owners, again, the high properties highlighted in, in, uh, in uh, green there. Uh, we did look at all the land uses around it. Uh, it's compatible with the majority of them. As you get to the east, you got CMAR Court, condominium development developed uh, six, seven years ago now, maybe a little longer ago. Uh, it's all condos. Uh, we held a public hearing at the Planning Zoning Commission. Folks did show up to that meeting. Um, I think most of their concerns were just regarding the design of an emergency room and how that would flow around the property. Uh, they didn't really issue any concerns about the zoning itself. Uh, when the emergency room facility does come forward and we start looking at the outside design, or, well, the design of the building, any exterior changes, we start looking at the revised site plans. Obviously they'll have 
ambulance bay or ambulance uh, route on the site, if you're looking at those, new lighting, anything like that, we'd be looked at the design review process, but the, the public did not express any concerns with the zoning itself. Planning Zoning Commission, like I said, did have a public hearing and they did recommend approval. Okay, hey, public hearing is now open. Thank you, Dave. Public hearing is now open for comments from members of the public, either in favor or in opposition. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward. Dave, have you received comments outside the meeting? Just regarding the design, not the zoning. Okay. Rachel, please. I have not received any. Okay. Please note that in the record. Seeing no one is coming forward, we'll close the public hearing. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance number 23-07, approving a request to rezone property from BC community business to BR Regional business for property located at 3201 and 3301 Armour Drive, Marion, Iowa. This will be Armour Plaza Associates and Armstrong Race Realty Company. This will be the initial consideration. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 23-07, approving the request to rezone the property at 3201 and 3301 Armour Drive. From BC community business to BR regional business. Discussion? Yeah, you're over. Go ahead. So Dave, I just to clarify, all of the traffic pattern on site for uh, movement of emergency vehicles, that has all yet to be decided, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Randy. I had one. It was just a follow up onto that one. I know these other items were addressed, but what about uh, sound, Dave? Or you know, ambulance sirens? Does that come up at this level at all? It 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 can. Oh, noise in general would, uh, not specific to the sirens. That'll that'll handle the design standards. At the commission meeting, it was indicated that ambulances would most likely be turning off sirens as they enter the site. Um, the lights may still be flashing, but the sirens are turned off. Okay, thank you. Okay, other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31358, approving OG's addition final plat for property located south of Boyson Road and east of Agate Circle, Marion, Iowa, Atlas LP Company. Second. So moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31358, approving OG's addition final plat for the property south of Boyson Road, east of Agate Circle. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 31358, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Okay, then the that brings us to the public forum, which is a time set aside for comments from members of the public on any item. Uh, if anyone's here to address council, please come forward. Okay, we'll move on to council comments. Start with Mr. Sternad. I have a few. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, I want to, I sent a note, but I um, want to acknowledge um, a public services department. We had an issue at the um, YMCA rec pool on Tuesday where an observer dropped a glass. We all know you're not supposed to bring glass. There's signs all over that say don't bring glass in your pools because it happened um, and it required us to drain the pool for the first time on our two-year-old pool um, and clean it and refill it. And thanks to Ryan and his quick work and his team who were so professional um, on Wednesday morning with our staff as we did this for the first time and ensuring that was done fast that we were actually able to get it drained, get it 
cleaned, get it refilled, warmed it up, and opened it at four o'clock this afternoon. So that's unheard of um, kind of a turnaround with these pools. So we appreciate that. I just wanna publicly acknowledge that that was, um, we were very grateful and so are the members. Um, and on the why conversation, also a reminder that it is the Marion City Showcase and the YMCA Healthy Kids Day on Saturday morning, April 29th. This is a free event open to Y members, non-members, all community members, even outside of Marion. Um, lots of uh, giveaways and interactive activities for families. Last year, we gave, we handed out 500 um, bags to kids of activities. There were over 800 people, 900 people in attendance. Um, so we encourage people to come out to that. It's a real fun activity and looking at healthy options for the community. And then finally, um, I have office hours on Saturday. So just a reminder that this Saturday at the library and every Saturday that we are there for council office hours. And I think it's just me Saturday. So come on over, say hello. Thank you. Will? Okay. Nothing here, Honor. Yeah, actually. Um, last weekend, I got the privilege to fill in for the Mayor's Youth Council um, with uh, our city manager. And I just wanted to say that it was just a really, it just kind of like got me going. I was joking, we were joking that Mayor Nick will probably never let us go back because we had those, we had those kids giving all their ideas for the community. We were taking notes. We you think I will do that. <laughs> well, that's not what I'm saying. We just got them like really riled up. So you might have a lot on your hands when you, when you come back next month. I'm used to it. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, but it was just really just inspiring to hear, um, and see like these kids get really engaged and and they were all seniors and talking about what they wanna do next and half of them wanna, you know, stay in the area like right away. Others were talking about wanting to come back uh, after college and doing some work in their careers. But it was just, yeah, it was just cool. Like these kids wanted to be involved. They wanna know what the city's doing. So just being able to find new and improved ways to, to keep them informed about what's what's going on and, and their, because they're obviously very involved kids already and to keep their friends and other classmates informed on what's going on and they had great ideas for that too. So it was just, it was really fun and thank you for letting me like fill in. Oh, you bet. Okay. Yeah. So, so just a quick comment. So I was taking, picking my grandkids up today and I got a granddaughter in eighth grade that does want to do some cooking classes at the library, but driving her home today, she was talking about some different things going on around the city. And she says, is there a position for a suggester? which means like a junior community planner. Anyway, I just, I just thought it was cute that she was bringing up that word and, and just the manner and how she did it, but kind of following up with their kids want to be involved. So, and it was just kind of cute the way she did it. Okay, I do want to say thank you to Ryan and Gage for um, handling the uh, meeting on, on Saturday when I couldn't be there um, and, um, Appreciated all the help. Uh, I'll find out from them how much they enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I, I loved getting everyone involved with that group because it is energizing. Um, and that's the whole point of it is, I mean, it was started because we wanted them to feel engaged, like they had input, their voices heard, they get to meet city leaders. And um, it, it's been four or five years and this, last couple of years, I'm finally hearing from them. They love their town, they love what's going on. Um, I, they're learning about all our projects and they're going and telling their families and their peers about it. So it, it is it is yielding positive results. And we're starting to hear that young people in Marion want to stay here, want to come back. Uh, and that's the whole goal of it is to get them to come back and be the next gauge that runs for city council and be the next leaders and the next mayor and use their energy and their talent here. Um, so that's, that's the whole goal and it's, it's, it's working. Uh, uh, I'm hearing from the schools, just some of that positive, um, sentiment about their town. So, um, wasn't the case a few years ago when I was in the schools having lunch with the kids and, and trying to gauge what they felt about their town. And that was the whole point of starting this, this program. And so thank you for helping with that, everyone has the opportunity to come and help with it and we'll keep trying to get everyone in, involved with it. Um, 
on the 10th, I had the opportunity to represent the city at the Great Places Conference um, to um, uh, present um, to the group on how to overcome challenges in implementing your vision plan. And so that was a really engaging um, like two sessions and was able to share a lot of what we are doing, how we approach um, uh, implementation of our, of our vision and uh, the issues we face and how we deal with them. And we had a lot, a lot of great questions and people were very um, uh, appreciative and loved hearing about what Marion's doing. And honestly, when we walked into the conference, it was like celebrities walking in because everybody was like, oh, everybody wanted to meet the Marion, the people from Marion and to tell us how, you know, uh, how much they loved what we were doing and that, um, you know, we've kind of become a role model for other, other cities in the state trying to improve their, um, uh, their town and, and to create, uh, create activity and momentum in their, in their cities. So, um, always, always a honor to represent our team in Marion. Uh, today, I had the opportunity to present a mini state of the city to the Linn County Bar Association, and that again um, was very well received. Um, and um, people um, walked out of there saying, "I want to go live in Marion now." So um, it, it is. It is uh, what we're doing is being noticed in the region, and I really appreciate um, everyone's hard work. Um, this morning, I had my monthly breakfast with the city manager. We had a couple that have, that have lived in the community for a long time walk up and tell us about uh, a, rep uh, a, a sales rep from New York who visits here and just can't say enough about how much they have, how much change they have noticed and how positive it is. Um, and just to, you know, to have somebody from New York complimenting Marion, I think is a is a pretty cool thing. So. Uh, you're all doing great work. I really appreciate it. I want to thank the city council again for their commitment to office hours. I think it's a very important thing to continue doing. And um, let's all keep uh, going in the same direction, working together, collaborating, giving each other the benefit of the doubt, and uh, reaching higher together because it is it is making a difference and it's become a lot of fun to, to be part of it all. So with that, the meeting is adjourned.